Uh, welcome back to Spartan Up the Podcast. I am Sephra. I have Dave, Johnny, Joe, and Marion behind the camera. Today, we are talking to two pentathletes. And if you're as interested to know what that is as I am, let's uh, listen to this next interview. It's actually pretty awesome. You guys, it is really you guys, awesome. Yeah, you guys are going to like this. Yep. for Spartan Up the Podcast in Colorado with Nathan Scrimshaw. Hi, everybody. So um, you don't know much about the podcast, but the idea is uh, we want to get to the roots, uh, attributes that get people from wherever they are in life to become successful. Could be a monk, could be a mom, could be a business person. You are an Olympic athlete. You're uh, an athlete for the U.S. Olympic team for pentathlon. Yes, that's correct. Pentathlon, yeah. so you're a pentathlete. Pentathlete, yeah, the modern pentathlon. And for those that don't know, the modern pentathlon is running, swimming, shooting, fencing, and equestrian all thrown into one sport in one day and uh, created for the modern Olympic Games. And I've been doing that for Team USA for the past uh, five years now. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 23. 23, and um, how does somebody, it's a small sport, it's not that big of a sport, 150 countries or so? Yeah, there's. Uh, we have a big uh, group of uh, countries that participate in the pentathlon and stuff, but here in the United States, it's a sport that, you know, it's not very well known and stuff, it's definitely growing, um, but it's a small, you know, tight-knit community of athletes um, from all over the world and stuff. How, well, how well have you done? Uh, right now, I'm ranked seventh in the world, um, one of the best performances in my life was a few weeks ago in Florida and Sarasota. Wow. Congrats. Um, I finished seventh there and uh, coming into Olympic year, kind of the end of our regular season right now and, and the yeah. Olympics only a few months away. It's a, you know, a great time and great place to be for me and I'm real happy about it. How many of you represent the U.S. and is it male, female? Yeah, so I mean national team, there's probably eight or ten of us that train in Colorado Springs, uh, men and women uh, okay. together. And there's more around the country, yeah. uh, but that's our core group. And then at the Olympic Games, only two men and two women uh, as Compete. a full team. And uh, right now, we're still at the end of our qualification process. So here in the next two weeks, we'll know who the rest of the team is um, going to be going. So who's who's com- you're in? I, I'm for, I'm qualified. Uh, the second place, hopefully my brother, who is also on national team with me, and he's uh, the only person that has a chance for the guys right now. He's really close. I will know here in two weeks. And then there's two sisters and a friend, Samantha Acterberg, that are all qualifying for the girls' places. Only two of them will go, so we'll know here for them as well in two weeks. Um, so what, come down the wire. What are the what are the chances you you guys win the thing? Uh, you know, and pentathlon's a crazy sport. Like I mean, it's so many variables throughout the day. It's five events, um, and really anybody that goes to the Olympic Games, it just depends. The horse is a random horse. You don't know what's going to happen there, um, so it can change the you know, the whole aspect of the competition. So. Anything can happen, and I don't know particularly if I, I would win or who would win, or you know. But it's uh, anyone's game on competition day. And really, you don't know until whoever crosses the finish line. It's like to the last second. So walk us through um, a pentathlon day at the Olympics. Like what's first? Yeah, so um, it'll actually be kind of split at the Olympics uh, on the 18th of, of August is when the round robin fencing. You and I were competitors. Yeah. We would fence each other to one touch. The whole body's a target, and then there's 35 other athletes in the competition. You would go on to compete. And, and get that touch against your opponent. The touch is just to the one body. One touch, yeah, just to the body, anywhere, mass, right. uh, hand, foot, anything. And how long does that take to get a touch? Uh, it's, you have one minute, one minute to get that touch, and, and then you, you go on to the next one. And there's 30, there'll be 36 bouts, 35 bouts total okay. uh, throughout the, the Olympics, and that takes roughly uh, several hours. That's on a separate day. Yeah. And then you have a day rest, and then we'll compete everything again. Um, this time the round robin fencing will be separate based off the points that you accumulated from the, the round robin fencing. Yeah. You'll be put into a ladder system. So the, the lowest ranked athlete will fence the second lowest rate. So if you're 36 in fencing, I'm 35th. We'd fence each other the one touch. If you win, uh, you would go up and fence the 34th. And so Got all it. the way down to the line to the Got first it. place. Got it. Now, after that, you go into 200 meter freestyle swimming. Okay. Um, just a time event, and you build points based off your uh, time there. So one, one, one swim. One, one swim. One, you know, straight down the line, 200 meters, uh, all, right. all out. It's a long, difficult race. Right. Um, two minutes doesn't sound like a much, but boy, I'm like I'm done after swimming. Right. But you're not done for the day after that, and then you have roughly 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the the organizing. Um, and they go on to the question show jumping. Um, the number one athlete will draw a number randomly out of a hat, so it's a lottery draw. Um, and the horses are corresponded to that number of the athlete. Got it. Which so I've you don't know what horse. So you don't have. You have no idea what the horse you're gonna have. Right. Um, you have 20 minutes to warm up with the horse, and you get five jumps um, where you can warm up, test the horse out, see how everything's working, see right. how what's going on. 
uh, and then you go and do your stadium jumps, which is 15 jumps, and a max course at the Olympics will be uh, four foot, which is roughly about up here, and I'm about six two. Yeah. Um, and the jumps can be wide, which is called an oxer, or yeah. vertical, which is a single pole. Yeah. Um, for, and you start off with 300 points, and everything you do that's a penali penalization it takes is points away, deducted. So. Got it. It's, it's definitely you don't know what's going to happen and then based off of your points that you is that, is that the pretty much the win or lose it's not necessarily win or lose but it can cost an athlete if you're the top ranked athlete going into it and you had, drew a bad horse or you're not a very competent rider right. it can change that the game even if you're the best runner in the world and shooter right. in the world because of the last two events yeah. you don't know what's going to happen right. so it can drop you from first to, to 30th who knows got it so after that, it's based off, you go into the combined, which is the running and shooting, um, and you're staggered off your points. So number one ranked athlete will start at zero seconds. Uh, the person that's would be behind them would be four points, is four seconds, the points accumulate to Got seconds. It. Got it. Uh, you go into 20 meters, is into your shooting station, you pick up your gun, you shoot your target, and it's 10 meters down range. This target size is roughly, I mean, this size an apple or yep. an orange. Sure. Um, you have to hit that target five times, you have 50 seconds to accomplish that. Um, and if you don't accomplish it, you have to do an 800 meter run, but hopefully you hit your targets, which competitive time we're shooting around, I would say nine to 13 seconds. You're com cleaning out five targets. You run 800 meters right. and you do that three more times after that. So it's four shoots and four runs at 800. So it's a two mile run and perfect shooting would be 20 shots. That, that's perfect. That doesn't happen all the time. Right. And then uh, it's staggered. So whoever crosses the finish line is the winner. And when you cross the finish line, that's the Olympic champion. And that's the big really? one for you. And that's oh, all because all everything leading up to it would have held you back in the run. Because you're building points right. throughout the whole day. Got you're it. building points. The fencing was building points, uh, swimming, the, swim, right. the equestrian. And right. then you start off in that combined. And the highest ranked points will start in zero seconds. And then you're four seconds back, four points back. It's just staggered all the way down to Got the 36 it. athlete. Got but it. there's been times where if you're going into the combined and you can be in 10th place, you're a great runner and shooter. We've seen people run up into first. It, it can happen. So right. even if you're, you know, down the line a little bit, it, you know, you can, you people in front of you, people in front of you can be bad runners or shooters, and and it can totally change the game. So it's not over until you cross it. It's not over until it's over. Yeah, really. It, it is a head game. Yeah, the whole the whole your body. I mean, the game it. of life is a head game, but, but yeah. right. Uh, I mean, yeah, life has taught me a lot, and uh, this sport has taught me a lot for life. You know, and they both yeah. work together and. Uh, yeah, yeah. That to get past that has uh, been something I've been trying to work for a long time. Do you see in your competition, do you see other athletes that maybe don't have their head on straight? Yeah, I was like younger athletes that are, so the best age for a pentathlete, I would say the late 20s, even early 30s, because okay. not only do you have years of experience, and that is key to the sport, but um, you just have all that experience together. But a young athlete might be more, you know, better shape and stuff, but they don't have those years of experience that is uh, sometimes vital to that, competition. That like, like that, hang on, yeah. run your own race, this isn't yeah. over yet. Yeah, so someone that might be 30 years old, has all this experience, might not be as physically in shape as a 22-year-old guy that's coming into compete, sure, sure. but he's got you know eight years more experience on the on the guy, and that can make a break between a Olympic yeah, you see, and Yeah, you not. see a lot of older runners, male and female, do really well in ultra-endurance mm -hmm. events, but I think because they know that I can yeah. deal with this. I'm not gonna yeah. die. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you, right. You're smarter. You're like you've grown up. You know, right. you know where you're at, and you know what you're capable of, and you don't let that mind game kind of take over. That journey, it's the experience, and the journey along with it. And then I have like run your race, and what I mean by that, not run your race as an athlete, but the race of life. And yeah. life's a, a journey and a race in itself. And and um, that's something that's kept me. I want to do it well, you know. And um, I want to finish the end of my race, end of my life. I want to. I just want to run well, and uh, that's something that my mental game has been just to run well and uh, help people along the way. Because it's it's not about me; it's there's something bigger to it, bigger to this we've, race. We've 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 uh, interviewed um, over I don't know, 250 successful people at this point. No one has ever said run your own race, the race of life. So that, that was a good one. I, I like that one. Run your own race, the race of life. Yeah. Right? It's the most important one we'll ever run. That's right, and it's short. It's yeah. a lot shorter than, yeah. <laughs> than you, you life, wish life it was a hundred miles. Life is short, but right. it's uh, it's it's very enjoyable. Yeah, if you make it enjoyable. Yeah, right. yeah. it's all about what you make it. Yeah, you're the man. Hey, good thank luck. Thank you so much. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah.
Pentathlon's awesome. I had no idea. It's an Olympic sport. Those would have been like my heroes. I would have been hanging out with that home team back then, right? <laughs> we're riding through horses. We're fighting with swords, swimming, bringing messages for the army across the land. I mean, this is awesome. This is... I. I Thank you very much for letting me know about this. I don't know. What do you guys think? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. 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 We're riding through horses. <laughs> All right. We're riding with swords. I'm so excited that I, I can't you're farm thinking sentences. You're of a samurai event. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like that one in Mongolia, right? Where they... I hope you're not sitting still while you listen. If you are, you better get a burpee break in. People ask all the time, how do I get fit? How do I get motivated? How do I get moving? It's really simple. Just start. You put one foot after the other. The next foot follows. Before you know it, you're moving. A body in motion stays in motion. Spartan Fit, been in the studio here for three days. It has been incredible. In between each page, I knock out three burpees. I'm doing it for us. The book is called Spartan Fit. You got to read it. Um, I think you're going to enjoy it as much as I did. And who knows, maybe after every page, you'll do three burpees too. You'll be fit by the time you get done with the book. Pick up the book, write a review. Let's get you out to a race. Join the Spartan Revolution. Pre-order now at SpartanFitBook.com and save 25% with the code FIT25. You said it right. That was awesome. Okay, we pulled it together. <laughs> Thank God for Marion getting us back on track there. That was good. Okay, but as Sefer was saying, uh, pretty cool to know what the pentathlon actually is with the riding, the swimming, the running, the shooting, the fencing. Uh, really cool. What an unbelievable event. Yeah, I, um, I'm one of the oldest Olympic sports. Um, I think there's about 10,000 of them around around the globe. It's not, it's not a giant sport for obvious reasons not everybody has a there's a, a there's a reason you didn't make it the spartan pentathlon it's not, <laughs> not really a huge market not a huge market yeah. um not everybody has fencing skills or a horse yeah yeah <laughs> right yeah. a lot of people can't swim unless you're a fish <laughs> Dave, <laughs> yeah, what if not. everyone who sent an email had to send it by pentathlon well let's do this we should start a new company forget ups Will be the Pentathlon well, Express. Well, it's funny, I, um, not to go completely off track here, but the message to Garcia, book written in the mm -hmm. 1800s, yeah. 80, yeah. 80 million copies sold. Um, in the 1800s? Late 1800s, 80 million copies sold. How many sold. people lived? More, More than, than 80, 80 million. million. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cornell. <laughs> I'm just joking. What are they hey, like? But, but, you know what? Speaking of 80 million, we've got actually one of those 80 million people we got to go to next because we still got to see Dennis Bosher. And Wait, hear I want to hear about the... Okay, we'll hear yeah, about let's the check, book. Let's check out Dennis. You guys are going to get kicked out of that. Um, uh, listen, these guys are Olympic athletes. Mm -hmm. and, and it's one thing to be an Olympic athlete w with one discipline. It's another thing to be an, af an Olympic athlete with all these disciplines, yeah. right? You've got to be pretty damn disciplined. What Absolutely. was the message to Garcia, though? We'll get you'll you'll find out okay. when we come back. We'll come back. <laughs> we are here for Spartan Up Podcast with Dennis Bauscher, who works for the Army, U.S. Army, and is also, uh, you were in the Olympics. Yeah, I competed in the 2012 Olympics in the sport of modern pentathlon. How was it carrying these boxes? Was it like anything like the Olympics? I know we carried about 600 pounds of boxes here. Is that something you're used to doing? Uh, not much, but pentathlon prepares you for, for anything. anything. So So it wasn't weird that I made you carry these across the field in Colorado uh, here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think a cool thing, especially looking at the military aspects. Yeah. Um, so 100 years ago is when pentathlon was first introduced in okay. 1912. Yeah. And a soldier in the Army, he was a lieutenant at the time, but General George Patton, competing in the 1912 Olympics wow. in modern pentathlon. So it was a very cool feeling for me that 100 years later I was able to do, you know, exactly what he was doing. And and um, it changed a little bit, though, from the time he, he competed, right? Yeah, yeah, they used right. to shoot, um, you know, real guns, like, I think right. it was 22s at the time, then right. we went to air pistol, and then London Olympics was the first time we shot with the electronic system, the laser system. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't realize um, it had that, that much of a storied history, uh, 100 years. What, what would you say was, was the one thing that got you into the Olympics? Like, what was it? Was it, you know, every morning I drank uh, special tea? I, what, what was it that you did, you think, that one thing that gave you the edge? Hmm. I don't know if there's any one specific external object. I think for me it was the, the internal motivation to show up to practice every day. And I think that's what got me to that goal. 
you know i i would look at my calendar and no matter what it was no matter how i was feeling i'm going to practice that day and that's i think was what it was for me Talk, walk us through your international competition where you qualified for the olympics walk us through the the trials and tribulations of that Yep, so it was at the 2011 Pan Am Games, okay. and for that competition, the top four finishers qualified for the Olympics. Yep. So I went into it, there were two U.S. males competing, and I think there were about 30 uh, international guys from North and South America that were competing. So I started off the day, fencing competition, I finished in the middle of the pack. Top, so top four qualified for the Olympics, and I'm down here in the middle. So you think, what are you thinking at that moment in time? What's going through your head? You're already out. At that yeah, point, and you out. do. You have those brief moments. It's like, I started competing in 2003. Here right. I am, eight years later, nine years later, 2011. Right. You just threw away just, all those years. Yeah, it's you're out. It's gone. You're I've done. Shot myself in the foot. All right. So what are you doing? Right? What are you doing? You're ready to pack it in, go buy a movie ticket for the day. And... <laughs> the great thing about pentathlon is I had more events during that day, and I didn't want to perform bad in those events. Okay. Yeah, the thought may have been there, I may not get top four, but I didn't want to do bad in the next event. Okay. So I just left that fencing behind me. I said, on to the next event. I, we had an Olympic athlete say to us, he would visualize crumbling the piece of paper up in his head and throwing it into the fire. It's gone. We're now on to the next thing. That negative thought's gone. So yep. it was kind of like what you're saying. Yeah, exactly right? like that. I just put it in that dark space. Yeah. You know, that way there's no light. I can't see it. It's not there. So I went into the swimming event knowing I wanted to do well. I had been training for swimming. I'm, I'm ready to do this. And I ended up winning the swimming event. Well, you won it? Yeah. Wow. So, but same thing. I'm moving on was to that, the next Was event. that expected? Maybe yes and no. I know the first half of the race, me and this other guy were neck and neck. And then I was just able to pull ahead and get yeah. a, I ended up winning by a couple seconds. But I mean, are you an incredible swimmer that you knew going into this? They're, they're gonna have I some knew I was going to be in the top. I didn't think that you I was going to win, right, win so that event. It. So now you're back. You, you've left the movies and you're back in the Olympics. Yeah, but not necessarily. Because like I said, it's top four after all your events. So I, I may have moved up a couple spots. Right. Right. But same thing. I have to worry about the riding event now. I right. can't, just like I had that emotional low after fencing, I don't want that emotional high to affect me in the riding event. Because right. riding event, I'm on a, I'm on a 1,200 pound animal, animal. I'm sitting there like jittery with all this adrenaline, that's gonna freak the horse out. Right. So I have to still remain calm. So kind of the same thing, I take that swimming event. Even though I won, even though it was a positive event, and I set it aside. That way I can go into that riding event with a clear mind. And in the riding event, I was able to get a perfect score. Wow. Yeah. All right. So your life so, turned around. Yeah. And then now we go into the last event, the run shoot. And I was in sixth place um, right. heading into that. And it's a handicap start. So the leaders start, and then based on how many points you are behind, right. you start. So if you catch if you catch a person, you've made up that point difference. Sure. sure. So going into the last 1,000 meters, is 1,000 meters at the time. Now we do 800s. I was in fourth place. I knew I'd left the shooting range for fourth place with a thousand meters to go. And the way the course was, we shoot here and there's like kind of like a U-turn. So when I was turning, I could see the fifth place person leaving. Right. So I knew he wasn't that far behind me. Right. So what I did in that moment, even though it was real quick, just a short little deliberate breath, a mental cue to myself of, let's go. Right. Because I knew I had a thousand meters to not let this guy catch me because if he caught me, who knows what kind of adrenaline surge he would have had right. and what kind of letdown that might have been for me. Right. So buckled down, went for it for that thousand meters. Right. And I actually ended up almost catching the third place guy. Wow. When I was coming to the finish line, I caught the third place guy, but he was able to out sprint me. Right. And then I crossed the finish line. I knew I was in fourth place. Right. Did that little like fist bump like realization I kind of looked behind I had almost tripled the gap to wow. that fifth place wow. person so that little breath that little mental yeah. cue which goes to show you how important the mind is in yeah. this whole game right yep for sure definitely yeah that's an amazing um, story all right so now you're in the Olympics it's the week before the Olympics you're feeling like you know what I crushed the swim I had a perfect score on the horse I'm probably gonna win this thing <laughs> that was going through your what's going through your head um so for me it was really just looking at the training that I had done and just yeah. kind of said to myself I'm ready for this right. you know I'm gonna go out there and compete hard compete with the best right. I'm gonna get it done 
I wasn't necessarily thinking so much of how it was going to turn out. It was just more of looking at my preparation, going into the event headstrong, not really even thinking about the end of the day, right. just getting ready to start you, that you morning. You looked to your left and your right, and you said, you know what? I've trained harder than all these guys. Yeah. Did you say that? Yeah. I mean, you look at the work we put in, especially when we have camps coming in, right. and you see what they're doing, like, okay, you know, I'm doing a little bit more than them. It's, it's right. going to pay off at the, at the end, end run. So what happens? So... Gun goes off. You're, yeah. fen you're fencing. Yeah, we start in the fencing event. Big thing is, the fencing is the one that I've always kind of struggled with. It's yeah. just, it's a combat sport. You're against another athlete. Yeah depending on the years of experience other people might have, and it's only one touch. Right. So if you make a small mistake, there is no chance to We're get that mistake back. Sure. Um, but the big thing is going throughout the day, I never wanted, even though if, if I had lost like three or four in a row, I didn't want that to affect the next bout. Right. So kind of like how I was taking the overall events in that Pan Am yeah, game competition, yeah. whatever touch, whatever happened, I just kind of set it aside to new get ready for the game. next session. New game. Yep. That, that's kind of what's nice about your sport is you get that opportunity to kind of refresh, reevaluate, right? Re-engage. Yep. Yeah. And that's it. Ties into that whole resiliency thing. Right. You know, you're doing a lot of events during the day. Your first event, it can set the tone. A lot of people say it can set the tone. It can help or hurt you. But I don't think so. It's just one event. And you can right. just set it aside and go on to the next Excellent. event. Right. Yep. If for somebody that's in business or a working single mom or a guy that's trying to become a monk or whatever, he just wants to be successful in life, she wants to be successful in life, what would you take from that whole experience you just described? How would you apply it to the everyday person? What would you say to that person? I would say make sure, first of all, set your goals. Know where you want to be. Know the path that you want to take to get to that point. Sure. And then... Because if you don't know where you're going, you're definitely not going to get there. Yeah, right. could be going off this way and you right. got to go that way. Sure. Um, another thing, I think a big thing is, is optimism. I think optimism is key because those negative thoughts can really drag you down, especially just in, in anyone's everyday life. You know, in the Army, um, we do a skill called hunt the good stuff. Yeah. You know, a lot of people during the day, like, oh, my day was real bad. This guy cut me off. You know, I... I don't know. Right, <laughs> it's sure. hard. A lot right. of negative stuff. But if they can think of the positive stuff, everyone has something good that happened to them that day. Sure. So if they can just point out something that happened good and why it was good. Focus on the good. and not, Yeah. Right. And then you can see over time that just leads to an overall positive outlook sure. in life. I love it. What's your favorite exercise? One exercise. You're on the moon. You're alone. You can only do one thing. Oh. I might just go back to... It's my, my army training, my it? push ups and sit ups. Uh, and I'm a burpee guy myself, so you're awesome. Thanks. Yep, yeah, thanks a lot. All right. So incredible the fact that he uh, goes in the first event, he gotta, he's got to be top four overall, finishes middle of the pack. What, 15, 16, there's 32 people? He's thinking, I'm done, it's over, but he's got to shake it off, goes in, wins the next event. But then he talks, he's got to shake that off too. So he can't. But this is exactly what we were talking about earlier with the pitcher and, yeah. and, and the basketball player. Yeah, we're talking about Roy Halladay and the idea that they said what made him such a great, great pitcher is that he can shake things off and be presently focused always. So if he threw a bad pitch, doesn't matter. The next pitch is what matters. And uh, we're talking about Stephen Curry. And I remember in the, in the, the championship game, um, Less than a minute left, game still super close. He misses a bad shot, clearly. Yeah. But they zoomed in as he was going to the bench for the timeout, and he must have hit himself in the forehead 20 times as he's walking. It's like, you idiot, you idiot, you idiot. And you knew the game was over because yeah. he's not going to hit the next shot when he's that stuck. Yeah, So, but isn't that a life lesson here? Huge, absolutely. Right? And as, as, as um, Bosher says in this, the life lesson is that all you can deal with is what's in front of you not what's behind what's in front of you it says leave negative mm -hmm. behind yeah exactly you know what it reminds me of you know it's really funny as you're doing that it's like all right you're, you're a squirrel right and and, and like <laughs> i am you miss, <laughs> i accept that you premise. miss you miss getting in, like the nut like someone else takes it are you, are you gonna sit there and go like i can't believe i lost my food but <laughs> no because then you're still gonna be hungry right i mean things in the animal kingdom mm -hmm. right when 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 they escape death they do something called the psychosomatic shake. Like they literally, their entire body shakes and that's how they shake off PTSD. They shake that off and then they're back present again. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting mm -hmm. that we use that phrase, shake it off, shake it off. But 
but like <laughs> we, you know, <laughs> you and Taylor Swift. <laughs> I don't understand the reference. Taylor Swift, you're cool, but I don't. Okay, I digress. No, but but I'm just saying, like people in nature, right? When when they almost get killed by the bear, they're not going to sit there going like here thinking about all the things they did wrong. They just keep on living in their animal instinct. Logical, but think, but easier said than done. Well, right? there's a great book True. though by Spencer Johnson who wrote the One Minute Manager, and it's called Who Moved My Cheese. And it's the idea that um, it's a parable about mice. And if somebody comes and moves their cheese and some of the mice are there and they have a big meeting to, to find out who moved the cheese and they want to blame the person who moved the cheese and they want to make new rules about not moving the cheese. Whereas the other mouse just goes and finds more cheese. It was what you're talking about. Instead yeah. of sitting around like being bogged down, it's like, mm-hmm. all right, life just handed me a situation. I'm going to deal with this situation and press on. Mm-hmm. Dave, Dave if anybody knows, um, you had a recent experience like this out at a gogi. Sh- I did. Show them I, your cheese. I d- <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not about cheese for me. It's about what in the world gave me this bug oh. bite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or is it a bug bite? No one knows. It's the mystery of the day. Uh, but, you know, I might, I'm not a squirrel, personally, <laughs> but what... What this person made me think of is uh, the ancient Stoics. <laughs> Always focus on what's in your control, not what's mm-hmm. out of your control. Mm-hmm. And what this pentath- what this pentathlete does when he's just thinking about touch after touch after touch, you don't think about the one you just did because you have no control over that. You always think about what you're doing right now because that's the only thing you can affect. 100%. The minute it's the past, it's the past. Mm-hmm. Which makes pentathlon such an amazingly difficult sport, mm-hmm. right? Not only do you have to know all those disciplines, but um, you've got to shake it off, get back in the zone, or get in the zone of this new battle, mm-hmm. right? Whether it's a swim, the run, the horse, and and um, and there's probably things that went wrong in each one of those disciplines. Yeah, and you mentioned there's something you still want to talk about with uh, uh, Nathan Shrimpshire too. That there was something right. that really resonated right. with you from that. Yeah, one thing he mentioned was uh, the value of experience. He mentioned that uh, the best kind of athletes are athletes that are in their early 30s, uh, because they have the they have the physical prowess. They're they're fit. They're in the best shape of their lives. Uh, they also have experience, uh, something like 10 years, 15 years experience, maybe more. And that experience is something you can't you can't learn in a week long program. You can't learn an intensive uh, intensive um, like a discussion group. You can't just pick those things up. You really have to spend. 10, 15 years just learning. Oh, Some people right. try to take a shortcut, um, but it, it, you really need patience if you're going to be successful. Well, speaking of not taking shortcuts, after 60 hours, our uh, adaptive athlete team who just finished a goji, a gogi, just walked up behind us up here at Muddy, so uh, hats off to them over there. What's up, guys? What's up? Good morning! What's up? Awesome job. Cool. Spartan yeah. pentathletes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, hey, if you want to find out more about Pentathlon, more about Spartan Up Podcast, more about our amazing Agoji. Nathan, next Olympics. Oh, oh Nathan, yeah. next Olympics. Thank you so much, buddy. Forget Real. that I said that. Real. Yeah, so uh, Real, right around the corner. Nathan is representing US- USA. I'll yeah. defer to my American friends. <laughs> He's going to crush it. <laughs> I, 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 confirm, I don't know who our Canadian is, that. but I'm cheering for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I'm going to go try to spectate. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're going Could to you go down there. Yeah, follow in Portuguese. You got to be very careful. Zika. Oh, Z- oh geez. Oh, that's what the borders keep going. <laughs> Spread the fear. Listen, I've been in Miami. Close enough. Uh, so no, but, but uh, Nathan. Good luck, Good luck man. Yeah. Good luck. It's Nathan. awesome sport. Well, thanks very much for listening. Just make sure to subscribe to all of our channels. Thank you for listening to another epic story of success. We hope you enjoy the episode. To find more show notes, audio, and video, please visit us at SpartanUpPodcast.com. The Spartan Up Podcast is brought to you by Spartan. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. Spartan.